I think the cities have long ago become intolerable for people. I did a small test on myself invol involving measuring my own carbon monoxide content in my blood. I went to the country, took some readings there, came into the town and spent all day wandering about London and Oxford Street and so on, taking repeated measurements of my own blood carbon monoxide level. And towards the end of the day, I, my blood level had reached a point which was only 1% below the level at which some performance tasks are badly affected. This, um, we're now in about a couple of hundred of the most polluted cubic yards of yes. London. Just what is polluting this particular part of Oxford Circus? Well, we've been here for some time now. It's really quite obvious. First of all, you've got noise. You don't need decibels or even perceived noise level to tell you this is absolutely intolerable for people. You've got fumes in the air. You can see them as a haze. You've got lead in those fumes, you've got carbon monoxide. These things, I think, have made this whole area of London absolutely intolerable for human habitation. Now, if you had your own doom watch now in operation, what would you do about it? Well, this obviously is going to cost a great deal of money, but what you have to do is to take cars out of this. The human beings can only adapt to a certain amount of stress, and already I think we're all here feeling the stress of the surroundings. This is going to cost money, it's going to upset shop owners, but it simply has to be done. We have to find a method, a democratic method, whereby this can be done. Money, who's going to pay for this? How would you suggest that it should be paid for? I don't know in detail, but one has to start from the assumption that money is spent for people, not just to just fill this, this whole street up for no reason. And if you think of all those cars down there, you've got maybe a hundred yards of cars they're all burning petrol, but they're not moving. We've taken oil out of the ground, we have refined it into petrol, we have put it into cars, and the cars are remaining stationary. This is not only irrational, it's quite mad. The one problem to me seems to convince the people that this will be good for them, for them to spend some more of their own money on improving their own quality of life. How would you suggest that this be got across? Well, in the end, the only pressure can come from the public. You see, the public here is still walking upright. So one can say that they are adapted to the intolerable already. So what one has to do is to educate the public, to show them repeatedly and with accurately acquired facts that this is intolerable for them. I, I worked out the other day, for example, in London, I hadn't walked on earth for three days. I'd walked on concrete or tarmac adam or something like that. This is, we're almost as if we're producing a new species, a sort of man of the city who is an adapted creature and, in my view, already slightly dehumanised. The opposite of pollution is improvement. Watford's idea for improving the quality of life in its main shopping centre is this. No traffic, so no noise and no poisonous carbon monoxide fumes. But there is another side to the coin. The people who come here have to park their cars in nearby car parks and walk around the shops, carrying their shopping with them. Now, if you think this sort of shopping centre is better than, say, Oxford Street or many other high streets up and down the country, would you be prepared to pay for it? Not myself. Fine enough, it breaks now. Well, it's a material to me. I just carry on my job, that's all. Well, do you think it's worthwhile spending money to make it a cleaner place and a less noisy place to be in? Yes, definitely. Would you be prepared to spend more of your money? Ah, <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> would you be prepared to help to pay towards getting it cleaned up? Yeah, I think I would, in the long run. Yeah. I think it would be um, an asset to London itself. But we just start here to shop and work. But as far as living, I mean, we don't actually have to suffer it as far as living is concerned. I mean, in the shops you don't notice it, do you? So, really, you know, I think they're far, far more important things. I think the public now is, is in, inaccurately and in, uh, incompletely informed. One of the things I would like any sort of Doom Watch group to do is to produce data for public consumption. You see, quite a lot of this work gets tucked away in obscure journals which the public never read. Now, there's nothing wrong, it seems to me, with the proper presentation of data in an attractive way to the public repeatedly, providing the data is accurate. The best way of doing it is to go on showing the public that we are using up our planet, in a way, if you can put it this way, we're living on a leasehold planet, and we don't ever pay the ground rent, to show them that they are, their way of life is using up our resources, it is pointless in itself, and it, if they're properly informed about the data which might come out of any such organisation, 
I believe in the end they would take action. They would demand changes. 